All right, in this example, example 4.3.5, we're asked to solve for x in the following equation. All right, so first thing I'll do is I'll take the right-hand side and expand it so that the 5 multiplies here. So I'll end up with 3x minus 1, 1, 1 equals 5x plus 5 minus 5 minus 5, 10. Then I'll want to have, just like you would in, in the real world, <laughs> the world of real numbers, I mean, um, I want to have all the x's on one side and all the matrices, the constants on the other side. And so I'll, here I'll add, um, I'll subtract 3x from both sides to get rid of 3x here. I'll end up with 2x on this side. Then I will also, um, send 5 minus 5 minus 5, 10 to the other side. And so here I'll be left with minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus uh, 5 minus 5 minus 5, 10. And so what I'll be left with is that 2x is equal to minus 6, um, 4, minus 1, uh, 4, minus 1, minus 12, oh, minus 11, sorry. All right, and now I'm going to multiply all of this by 1 half, and what I'll get is that x is minus 3, 2, 2, 11 on 2. All right, so all of this seems pretty natural. Um, it feels like all of this works, and of course it does, but let me show you why we're allowed to do all of these things. Let me move everything here. Sorry, I'm a bit low on space. Let me leave it here. All right, so I want to show you what we're actually doing over here. So when I had 5x, I subtracted 3x, and we said, well, that, of course, gives me 2x, but that would be true in the world of real numbers. Why is it still true in the world of um, matrices? Well, that's because I have um, 5 minus 3, and I can pull the x out, and I end up with 2x. So all over the place here, you're naturally using properties of matrices when you solve equations like this. All right, so one thing we did that's quite interesting is we multiplied by minus a half to get rid of x. And again, that's one of the properties we had that we could switch to parentheses and cancel and get one x, which was just x. Um, that's not always the case. We can't always cancel whatever coefficient is in front of x. We can when it's a real number, but if it's a matrix, we cannot. So let me show you here why we can't. So I have an equation here, ax equals to a matrix, and normally to solve it, you would just send the a to the other side like we did for the two, right? We multiplied by one half and sent uh, the one half to the other side. Well, let me show you that you wouldn't be able to do that here by showing you to you that we have two different matrices. We have this B and we have this C that both fit this equation. So let's try a B. So this is when X is equal to B. That gives me 0, 1, 0, 3. B is 1, 1, 4, minus 2. And so I end up 0 times 4, yeah, 4, 0, minus 2, 0, 12, 0, minus 6. So this is a solution. So x equals b works. And then if I have ac, that's still 0, 1, 0, 3. And now I have 5 minus 5, 4 minus 2. And I get 4 minus 2, 12, minus 6. Yep, so x equals c works. In some sense, that means you can't cancel a because we have ab is equal to ac, 
but b is not equal to c so a system uh, an equation like this has infinitely many solutions like we'll see in a bit All right, so to solve an equation like 4.1, we cannot simply cancel A algebraically. Um, in the next chapter, in chapter five, we'll be talking about inverses of a matrix, and there you'll see precise condition to make the canceling of the matrix A possible. For this specific A, you cannot do it, but for some A, it would work. So let me show you another example of some weird behavior of matrix algebra, things you wouldn't see in the real numbers. So I want to take this product here. Um, I'm going to end up with a 2 by 2. So here I have minus 3 plus 3, um, 6 minus 6. I have 9 minus 1 minus 8. I have minus 18 plus 2 plus 16. Do you see it? Everything I have is zero. And so here we have two matrices that are not the zero matrix. But if I take AB, I get the zero matrix. Let me write two by two. But I get the zero matrix. All right, so this is different from real number. In real numbers, if I have a b equals zero, that means a equals zero or b equals zero. That's not true here. All right, so here are two takeaways that are important that make matrix algebra more complicated and frankly a bit more interesting than real number algebra. Uh, we cannot always cancel matrices from an equation, so it's not because AB is equal to AC that B would be equal to C. And there are non-zero matrices AB so that A times B equals zero. So if A times B equals zero, you cannot say that the matrix A is the zero matrix and you cannot, or, or that the matrix B is a zero matrix.